Hey subscribers and watchers from Slide Nerd, this is Vivs here. In this video, let me continue our discussion of the scroll tabs. Now if you guys remember from the last video, here we have our get item method inside our adapter for the view pager and then there's the get count and both have a log.d statement. Let's actually comment both those statements by having a control forward slash here in Android Studio. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to show you something else. Inside fragment A, I want to show you what happens exactly with the life cycle of the fragment. I have all the methods on attach, on create, create view, activity created, start, resume, pause, stop, destroy. And also notice there's on save instance state which has also been mentioned here along with the log statement. Now you'll understand shortly why I said this statement. And then here you go to on create. I've also tested that if the saved instance state is null, it means we are creating this fragment for the first time. Otherwise, we are simply getting the data back from some subsequent instance, right? So let's run this and try to find out what is exactly happening with our life cycle here at the top. So the first time the user starts the app, on attach is called and then it says on create first time because if you guys remember, saved instance state equals null at this point. And then there's on start resume which is the normal life cycle. Now let me try moving away from fragment A to fragment B over here. Notice it is still not paused and this is because Android does a smart way of doing things. It assumes that from fragment B you can easily go back to fragment A so it does not stop the life cycle. But then if you go to fragment C, well this time you're surely moving away from fragment A and hence it calls on pause, on stop and on destroy view. Now notice one more thing, on save instance state has not been called for fragment A. Neither is on detach been called for fragment A because like I said, the fragment is not completely destroyed. It is maintained as a Java object without a user interface linked with the activity at this point when you're looking at fragment C. And all these methods that you see over here are purely from fragment A because I'm not added any methods to fragment B or fragment C. Now let's try going back to fragment B and as you guys notice when we go to fragment B, fragment A is on create view, on activity created, on start, on resume is all up and running. Now if you go back all the way to fragment A, what you see is the on resume part which you saw earlier. Again, if you guys noticed very carefully, when we were at fragment B, fragment A's life cycle was already kept ready for us so that you don't take a lot of time to load on demand when the user switches from B to A. Now this is one of the smart mechanisms that Android uses. Again, if you try going back to fragment B, at this point, at this point there is no sign of pausing or stopping, but now when you further navigate fragment C, this is when things are stopped and destroyed. And as always, there is no mention of on save instant state. Now what is the problem with this? Well, if you're downloading something in your fragment A and you move to fragment C, your download data is going to be lost. And that is the reason why we should use a fragment state pager adapter if you want to save data across fragment changes in your view pager. So now if you guys understood what was the difference and what is the use of the fragment pager adapter, let's try to put the state pager adapter here with the same code and try to see what happens. So I'm going to say fragment state pager adapter this time, press alt enter to perform the import. No other changes need to be done because all the other methods are just the same way. So now let's run this. Carefully notice in the earlier one there was no on detach and there was no on save instance state. Also it was the on create view over here which on create over here which is called first time. After that, well, I don't see it being called anywhere else. That means the fragment object was created only once. Now with the fragment state pager adapter, let's run this app again and try to find out what happens. Now with the fragment state pager adapter, you see the same series of steps when we start our app for the first time. If the on create for the first time, on create view, on start, resume. Now let's try going to fragment B by switching the view pager and then further going to fragment C. Now this time, if you guys notice, take a careful look, on save instant state has been called for fragment A, which means you guys can save your state and that is why it is called fragment state pager adapter because it allows you to save the state when you're flipping between different fragments. Also notice another thing, on attach and there's on 
detach which is being called which was not being called before when we were working with our fragment pager adapter now this is the difference between fragment pager adapter and state pager adapter now let's try switching back fragment B and then let's go on to fragment A and this time again on attaches call and take a careful look it says on create subsequent time which means the saved instant state from the bundle object is not empty inside our on create view method I think on create method right here you guys remember if saved instant state is null we say it's first time otherwise it's subsequent time and here in our log cat it says subsequent time which means you're actually saving some data before you exited and then coming back to fragment a you're getting that data back inside your on create method and this means the fragment state pager adapter completely destroys the object because it also calls on detach and on attach completely and hence you can have several fragments inside the fragment state pager adapter this is the clear difference between both the adapters so now that we have seen that difference let's simply add a tab at the top and let's get this over with add a tab we used we use another XML tag right inside our view pager it is called Android dot support pager title strip now this is the one which is gonna add our title at the top and now we have to put some values here like specifying the width height and stuff so I'm gonna say layout width is gonna be match parent in our case I'm gonna say wrap content again I have to arrange everything here Android studio does not work with this auto formatting stuff and then I'm gonna have to put some padding and then the other thing that I'm gonna do is give an ID saying at the rate ID slash title and then I need to specify the layout gravity of where this pager title is gonna appear you can have it anywhere so I'm gonna say Android gravity don't worry if Android studio does not show you the option I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say top and also give this a background color to make it look a little better I'm gonna say hash 33b5 e5 which is one of the most recommended colors by your Android developers now at this point our title has been constructed so whatever text you will see at the top of your tab will be shown inside this pager title strip but first we need to specify what text it is right so going to main activity inside our adapter we need to add another method that gives the title when the view pager says hey show me the title for the first tab show me the title for the second tab and so on so that method is called get page title and as you guys notice it has the same type of set where it says end position if you have position as zero you want to say tab one tab two and so on so let's make that happen and then we'll say if position equals one then return tab one as the title right so let me replicate this for the other two let it's actually position zero sorry about that should be position zero one two so let me copy paste this so just the way you say get item at a given position the view pager also calls get page title at a given position and if you say tab one tab two this value is provided here to this pager title strip and it displays the appropriate title without you having to worry so at this point our scroll tab is complete let's run this and take a look at how it looks there you go ladies and gentlemen that is our scroll tab our view pager calls get item to get this fragment a it also calls get page title with position as zero to get this title called tab one now if you swipe right there you go it comes to tab two and fragment b and further if you swipe further there tab three and fragment c this is how you make a scroll tab in android and hopefully you guys have understood the difference between fragment pager adapter and fragment state pager adapter and also how Android smartly avoids the need to create a fragment on demand when the user is just switching to that fragment so if you guys do like what you saw please like comment share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below in the next video we will talk about how to implement swipe tabs in Android in the meantime have a nice day